Hello Internet, welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today we'll be discussing how to actually get a hold of the game, so if you've already done that you can move on to the next video. So first off, this is a free and open source game, so if you find it for sale anywhere you should probably follow the instructions in this video and just get the game for free. It's very easy to get a hold of the game and I would recommend that you never ever pay anyone for a copy. Now there are a few ways to obtain the game and we're going to talk about the main ones, but understand that I am working on Windows, so this will not be a comprehensive guide to installing on other operating systems. Today we'll talk about the options available to users, which include downloading a zip archive using the third party launcher, we'll talk very briefly about compiling the game yourself, and we'll talk about a potential upcoming Steam release. Now to get the game, you're going to need to navigate to the Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead GitHub page. There'll be a link for this in the description down below. Now if you scroll down on this page you will find two links, one to experimental builds and one to stable builds. If you're not sure which you should download, check out my previous video on the difference between stable and experimental, I will link to this in the description down below, and a card should pop up in the corner of this video. Now I'm assuming you have watched that video and or have decided which version you should get. It's as simple as clicking the link for the appropriate release type. Both the experimental and the stable page will have similar layouts, there will be a list of links available to you you will need to select the download that applies to your operating system. For instance, the experimental builds page has Linux, OS X, and Windows. You probably already know which of these you're going to need, and for me, that would be the X64 version of Windows. You can see here as well that some of the files are labeled with curses and some are labeled as tiles. If you want a tile set, that is, if you want uh, sprites and art in your game, you will need to download a tiles version. If you want just classic ASCII characters without any tiles, you would download a curses file. Now on Windows, as far as I know, the curses build is no longer available, but we do have an ASCII tile set that you can use to get that somewhat classic look. Simply click the link you want and download the file. One other thing worth mentioning is that Cataclysm is available on mobile as well. There's an iOS version out there somewhere, uh, it's not up to date. The iOS version is not built by the dev team, someone else was doing that, so it's not really something I'm familiar with. But if you're an Android user, you can play Cataclysm pretty painlessly. In the Google Play Store, you will find two CDDA versions, one for stable and one for experimental. Things may change in the future, but as of the time of this recording, the green Z represents stable and the red Z is experimental. You can also manually download an APK file from the GitHub, though looking at it, it's for some reason only available for stable. I'm guessing there just has not been a recent experimental release, so that's why it's absent from that page. Either way, the Android version is directly maintained by the dev team, so for the foreseeable future, this should be available and relatively supported and up to date. And with Android, generally, if you try to install an APK file manually, you will have to enable your device to install outside files. That's really not something I'm going to cover in this video. You'll have to Google around to find a, a guide for that. There are also builds available for Arch Linux, Arc Linux, uh, Fedora and Debian slash Ubuntu which uh, you can find those on the main GitHub page below the link that we clicked earlier. I don't really know anything about these or how they work, sorry, but uh, I figure if you want to build those, you probably already know what you're doing. Now for Windows, after I download the file, I can simply extract the zip archive and the game is ready to play. Go into the extracted folder and run cataclysm-tiles.exe to play the game. There are other options available for obtaining this game. If you're code savvy, you can compile the game yourself. Again, Cataclysm is free and open source and this GitHub page has the code for the game. Now I can't give you a comprehensive guide for compiling yourself, mostly because I'm an idiot and technical things make my brain hurt. Now I've done it, but I'm not really tech savvy. Odds are good if you know how to do this, you probably know a lot more about it than I do. And if you don't know how to do this, I would really recommend you don't try at all. Another option that is likely to be available in the pretty near future is Steam. Someone is working right now on getting Cataclysm available through Steam. I don't really know how this is going to shake out. Like I said, it doesn't exist at the moment. I'm a little nervous about what will happen with the Steam version of Cataclysm, but it is something that may be available to you in the future. If that's the case, you should be able to search for Cataclysm on Steam, and ideally, it will be there for free. And then finally, we have the third-party launcher. This is only available for Windows users, unfortunately. The Cataclysm launcher is third party, which means that it's made by someone other than the development team for the main project. I personally use the launcher, the main benefit of it being that I can update frequently very easily without any real headaches. But unfortunately it is third party and this means I really can't vouch for it. Yes, I use it and I've never had any issues, but you have to decide if you're willing to use a program that's been distributed by basically some stranger. 
I'm not affiliated with the launcher in any way, and I'm not telling you to use it. That's entirely up to you. Uh, but I will say that I use the launcher and a large percentage of the community also uses the launcher. So that's something that's available for you. Now, if you do want the launcher, though, there will be a link in the description down below. It has a Windows installer and is a pretty straightforward process. We should probably cover the launcher in a separate video, at least to talk about its functionality, but it does make updating the game and installing sound packs much easier. The launcher is most valuable for people who want to update the experimental version of the game on a regular basis, but if you're playing on stable, the launcher really doesn't offer much benefit to you. And honestly, I think that's it for this short tutorial episode. Hopefully at this point you've downloaded the game and are ready to play. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit that like button on the way out, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video.